Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Anyway, let's talk about today and our, our coaching session, um, which is just absolutely going to be awesome. I like to have measurement devices. Can I ask, who likes to know and have a, a measurement uh, to know how you're doing? I love, I love, 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 love. Okay, who, who loves measurements? I, I love uh, being able to measure and, and know, you know, how well I'm doing in something. So if I, when I'm at the gym, I know my weights and I have my personal bests and every Every month or two months, I, I go and compete against myself. On my spin bike, I have my personal best. I know what I know, and I can go against it. In, in my finances and business, I have a few measurements in my business. You know, how many uh, people am I touching every single day? How many leads am I getting? How many sales are we making? What is revenue? How many people are getting certified? How many people are turning up to these calls? We, we measure things, okay? We measure things because when you measure it, you're able to then know um, where you can improve and it gives you good feedback. I really love feedback. Uh, I really don't like losing, uh, and I, but I want to know if I am. When it comes to life, there can be many different ways you can measure your life. Hey? And how do you measure a successful life? And for a very long time, I, I, I pondered the idea uh, how do I measure success in my life in any sort of tangible uh, way? You know, how, how, would I, how would I do that? You know, how would I measure it in a way that gives me enough of scope to be able to adjust and, and make my life the way I want? And so, you know, I tried lots of different, different things. And what I came up with was an idea of my ideal average week, my ideal average week which is a week that I can um, reflect, my, reflect on and ask myself, how close was I to living that week? See, some weeks are gonna just suck, okay? Some weeks you're gonna, you're gonna have things go the wrong way and that's just part of it. Some are gonna be great. You know, there's gonna be times and weeks in your life you do amazing things, you launch a book or you, you get married and there's gonna be horrible weeks where, you know, a person you love um, passes away or, you know, you find out that, you know, you made a mistake or, or something went wrong or someone's betrayed you. There's, there's gonna be things. So what we must have is we must have a, a measurement so we can look back at the end of each month and end of each year, uh, end of each quarter even, and ask ourselves, how many times did we live our ideal average week? Does that seem like a good idea, you, you know, to, to have, have this? And the reason why I like a week is it's very easy. You can easily have um, a bad moment, you know. You can have a tough hour. I mean, you can have a tough day. But, but I don't think that anyone should ever have a week that's really that far off their ideal average. So ideal average, it means what is the week that you choose to live most of the time? What is that week? See, the, 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 there's, there's so many different ways we can think about life. You know, is it a search for meaning or is it a search for happiness? Was it a search for fulfillment? Is, are we trying to, um, you know, overcome human limitations and uh, ascend to a different plane, plane of um existence it, you know there's, there's so many things this is about being honorable uh, in society a good member of this helping others there's so many ways you choose to measure your life but here's my question to you what is your ideal average week and let's explore this if you could take seven days you know sunday to, to saturday or monday to Sunday, however, you, however you're going to do it, how would you design your week so that it is just your, your, you know, your week the way you want it? Now, we all know that there's things that we got to do. You know, most of us wouldn't put in our, in our ideal average week um, taxes and, uh, and cleaning the house. 
But we know those are things that need to be done because we don't want to live in a dirty house. And, you know, we want to live in a functional society where, where everyone contributes and we look after people who don't have as much as us. And so, you know, th there's those things are needed. So what's the ideal average? Not the one where it's really, 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 you know, you're high, where, you know, you're, it's some, some amazing week. It's, uh, it's what is your ideal average? And that's my question to propose to you today. What is that? How would it be? What would be your ideal average weekday? What would be your ideal average weekend? How would you have it? I think out of everything in life, this is actually the most important thing that you can clarify. How would you like your week to be? What would you do in the morning? What would you do you know, in the middle of the day? How would the end of your day be? What sort of um, flavors of life would you experience? Where would you, where would you eat? This is such an important question. It's something I want you to consider. What is my ideal average week this week? What does my ideal average week look like? And can I tangibly create a week that at the end of each week, I can look back on it and I can assess whether or not that week was, was an ideal average week or if it was not. It's a, it's a uh, fantastic exercise, fantastic exercise, because I can't see a better unit of measurement to know if my life is on track than my ideal average week. You see, in the, in the times when you, 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 know, you do something big, and obviously I've just done a few um, big things that I've been really looking forward to. Uh, so, 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 I can't ignore so that someone's what someone's typed in because I need to coach it. It says, I have no clue anymore, but no pain would be a good start. It's just, it's just such a defeating thought, hey? It's not your ideal average week, and it's completely focused on the, the problem orientation. But I love you for typing it in. And so, so I love you. So thank you for typing it in. Is you must choose how you're going to live so that it's you that is creating what you're going to create so that your body has a reason to release the problem or the pain. If there's no reason to, if there's no, what are we going to do? Then your body has simply not been given the instructions of what it's supposed to do. The only thing it knows is to, is to try to fix this no pain thing, this pain thing. But yes, folks, this is how I want my week to be. This is what I'd like to be doing. Can, can you acknowledge that? That starts giving the correct instructions to actually a creation, actually what you'd like to do. Yeah, this is very important. See, on the week that I launched the best-selling book, it looked pretty much the same as other weeks where I was writing the book. And this is, it, it looked pretty much the same. From the outside in, there was a, there was a couple different things, like on, on those mornings, I I checked Amazon or whatever. There were different conversations. There was, you know, different things. You know, I did an event over the weekend, which was a little bit different. But, but overall, my week looks pretty much the same. My day looks pretty much the same. You know, it's, it's that, it's, it's so, you know, most, most days uh, I have my, my set morning. Uh, I work from, from eight to about 12. I go to the gym, I switch business uh, businesses and I work on the other business to about four or five uh, or, and gym or tennis, by the way. And in the evening, I'm typically out for dinner with people connecting. And that, that's basically that's basically how my day is, no matter, you know, no matter what's happening. You know, in that time, there's always coaching, there's always videos, there's always working on my business. But, but that's the day I choose. And it. It, and that's my week I choose, you know, on the weekend, you know, we, we, Harriet and I spend a lot of time together, but obviously this last weekend, I, I, I ran a big event and that was different. And it is, it is such a blessing to, to define your week the way that you would live it, regardless of anything else that's happening, because true joy, true happiness in life is in the doing, you know, there's a saying, hey, the proof is in the pudding. Well, I think the proof is in the eating of the pudding <laughs> because, you know, it's not in the pudding. It's in the actually enjoying it. <laughs> so the proof is in the eating of the pudding. There you go. It's another, there's another T-shirt example. The proof is in the eating of it. It's the actually doing it. And, and if you don't set this, your life up, what happens is you'll get to big moments, big, 
um, big things that will happen. And because your whole life was set up around them, when they happen, you don't know what you're doing anymore. But if you have your structure and your life set up that this is how I live, that it's simply you just you just go to, to the next level or if things aren't going right, you do the same thing. So this is my this is my question. This is my question to you. What's that week going to be that for the next, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, whatever, however many years you can live that same week? And, you know, some weeks you go on holiday and you go on a skiing trip or whatever. I get it. But I'm talking about your ideal average. You know? The ideal average, the one you're just going to keep on living again and again and again and again and again and again. It's so critical. So here's my challenge to all of you. My, uh, my goal, my wish, my dream, my choice for all of you. Uh, Jax has asked a question. Do you, I, I don't have social media, Jax. I don't have social media at all. I don't have a single social media thing on my phone. I have no social media, but that's just because you asked that question. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm, uh, if you message me on social media, my team gets it and then sends it to me and then we find a way to get it back to you. I don't, I don't have, I don't like it. Um, what was I saying? Ideal average week. So the way to do this is, you know, you've got 24 hours in a day. Okay. And uh, um, you have 24 hours a day and you're going to sleep some of it. So, so start out and go, okay, well, I'm going to sleep in this part, which gives you a, a sleep time and a wake up time. And then you've got a certain amount of hours that you're, you know, you're, go you're going to be awake of obvious stuff. Hey, now out of the time that you have awake, you, you, you've got some choices that we designed over the weekend, right? And not all of those choices needs to be, um, have things to do every single day, true? Um, however, there are set times that you wanna be doing things. Most of us have an occupation uh, or a job that's gonna take up a certain amount of the day. And, and so, you know, go put that in because you know, a job that you love and uh, that earns good money and uh, ensures that you're, you know, you're productive in society and get paid. That's a good thing to so put that in. And then start asking yourself, what are you going to put around that so that your week just feels great? You know? So it just feels great. What, what is important that every weekend you get done? How do you want to start your day? I start my day with meditation and then coffee. <laughs> Everyone loves my... Uh, my love for coffee, by the way, it is in my brain to create, create a coffee brand called Superconscious Coffee. <laughs> but, but, but that's how I'm going to do it. And so here's why. Many of us deal with some aspect of self-sabotage. Many of us deal with some aspect of self-sabotage, meaning a part of us, a part of us is fighting another part of us. Has is, is, is anyone felt this? There's an aspect of you fighting the other aspect of you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I know. I know that a lot of us, a lot of us experience that. Many times the, uh, the self-sabotage is actually a symptom of not living your ideal average week. Many times self-sabotage is a symptom of not living your ideal average week. I'll give you an example. You have this part of you that just wants to be lazy and procrastinate. And all it does is it gets more and more and more annoyed the more it gets, it, the more it gets uh, ignored by the other part of you that just wants to be a super achiever and do everything. There's a part of you that just craves attention with your family. And then there's another part of you that wants to work on your art. 
and they battle or vice versa. Does that make sense? It's like uh, vice versa, like it, it changes. It can be either one. And, and so sometimes, not all the time, sometimes you haven't created your week so that all the different aspects and personalities uh, of you get to actually experience what they love. I have a part of me that just loves to compete. I love to compete. I love to, I love to play sports. I love to compete. I love, I love it. I love the black and white nature of, you know, two people are playing. There's one winner, one loser. I like that. And uh, I really, you know, I like that. That's something that I enjoy. I love to compete. And so I must have outlets where I get to go and compete. There's a winner, there's a loser, and you get to play and you get to get to do that. And uh, I also really, really love to, uh, to, to completely chill out, to do absolutely nothing. And I love to read. I love to read. If I don't get enough reading, and those of you guys always know, you go, oh, Chris, you read this book? I'm like, yep, read that book. I love to read. I love to, you know, I love to coach. I love to be on business. I really love to, you know, I love to be looking after my property portfolios and my other, I, I love all of these different things. And at times, the part of me that loves to compete, you know, you know what, you know, we just, everything's just so nice. You're not doing anything competing. So it's, you need to have that. Or if I'm, I'm always competing, then, then where's the, the, you know, where's the yin part of me that gets to have some time to chill? Does that make sense? So if I don't have my ideal average week set up in a correct structure, I end up not allowing all the different parts of me to actually have their time in the sun. Does that make sense? It doesn't, doesn't get its time. And so it doesn't get its time. You might think, well, I'll do it later. But the problem is, is it, it always boils up. Most people who need a holiday is because they haven't set up their life in the way where they don't need a holiday from it. Is it true? They haven't set their life up uh, in, in a way that they, they don't need a holiday from it. They, they haven't created, well, I'm going to, you know, enjoy this. I'm going to uh, take some time out here. And they also end up fighting themselves. See, if the aspect of them that really enjoys being lazy and watch Netflix knew that it was going to have time later today to chill and watch Netflix, well, then it can go, I'm going to do that later. So I may as well right now smash out my business objectives fast so I can go and do that. This, the, the, the alternate is that we, we don't schedule that other time and all we do is just keep on going for it, be in that end result, and the other part starts crying out and then what happens, I need a break happens. So you, you stop everything and you go completely the other way and turn everything off and then you go turn it, then you go get back on the horse again and then on and off and everything else. So a lot of times, self-sabotage can actually be created because we're not acknowledging all the aspects of ourself and letting them have a place in your week. Hmm. Mm. So my question to you right now is what parts of your personality are you not allowing to live in your week? And if you just gave that part of you an hour every couple of days or, or a Saturday morning, how would that fill you up to go and do the, the other things you really want to do? How would it feel if you allowed yourself that morning um, walk, uh, that chilled out um, brunch on a Tuesday to spend an hour with friends when you normally don't? What would it feel like if you actually said, I choose to live my ideal average week every week 
and I'm going to schedule it and I'm going to do work at this time and I'm going to do self-care at this time and I'm going to do reading here and art here and dance here and uh, a date night here and uh, you know uh, you know, date night no kids night here or, or time with my kids here because that's important to me I'm going to spend you know Saturday morning at their sports knowing that you don't have to have in the back of your mind there's this other part of you trying to sabotage it so you can just be present in every single moment how would that feel how would that feel and how would that then allow you to to just move to your end results because you actually set up a weak structure where everything just happens like clockwork. It's, it's just as it is. You know, I believe that that sort of structure creates more freedom than, uh, than anything else. In fact, I think a, 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 a focused structure is far more freeing than I'm just going to wake up every day and see where it takes me. In my opinion. In my opinion, that's that's just more freedom because I, I can just relax into the moment knowing that I know where I'm going to be, I know what I'm going to be doing, and everyone around me knows. See, you simply can't do it all, but, because we only have so much time, however, you can create a week that you don't need a holiday from. Is it true? Your ideal average week is simply the most important measurement of your life. It's hard to have an ideal average day because some days you just got to get got to do things that you don't typically love. That's part of life, <laughs> you know. And however, it's it's really really quite something to have an ideal average week. Uh, you you can pretty much guarantee that most weeks over seven days. You can you can make it make it right and so so here's my challenge who's up for the challenge hey who's up for the challenge of going okay I'm going to design my week how I'm going to fit everything in um, what I'm going to do at certain times of the days well, when I am going to find that time to be with this child and then that child or these two children together when I am going to do a date night because that's important to me when I am going to read when I am going to have time to do nothing and just just watch Netflix or whatever, you know, watch a movie or whatever, just, just to completely chill. When am I going to do it? So then when I do lenses with Rochelle at the end of each week, uh, you know, then, then I can actually look back and go, well, how, how did I do? You know, did I, did I get to live my week or, or am I, you know, just letting one part of me take over? You know, I think it's a very important and very important thing is to, to have this. So, so anyway, my challenge for you is, is to, to set this up and, and to have it and literally have it written out. This is my ideal average week, my exactly what I want to do. And, uh, and then at the end of each month, you can look back over four weeks and you have a measurement, you know? You know, you, you, you have a measurement then to go, am I on track in life? Because your finances might do this, your relationships might do this, other stuff might do this, like they can all change. But there's one thing you can do is go, you know, I did this and then I was able to do that and, and I got it all done. It is crucial. It becomes the, it becomes your, you know, your scoreboard, you know, it becomes your scoreboard, doesn't it? It becomes your scoreboard. It becomes the one thing that, that you, can, you can go, right, that is something I can control. I can control how I use the most precious thing I'm given, which is each moment, okay? each, each hour, each second. So, so I think it's really, really, really important. It is, it is quite difficult to, to find a worthwhile or meaningful measurement device of life so i think that uh, that a week is probably it does that make sense i think that's probably it until until someone gives me some um some other insight or or i get some other insight on a better 
a better system, uh, I think that's the way to the way to measure it and the way to go because it, it's different for all of us. Uh, but if we have that, we can do it.